Ah, the rookie question. What front axle do I have? Well, short and sweet. It's a Dana 30. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the... Ne okay, that joke's getting really old, isn't it? So there's a whole bunch of ways to tell what version of the Dana 30 you have, and a whole bunch of reasons you want to know that information. In this video, I'll focus on the XJ and MJ, as the axles in ZJs, WJs, YJs, and TJs sometimes have different defining traits that'll make this video really confusing. To clarify real quick, in this video we're only talking about the front axle. The XJ had a handful of different rear axle options, and I have a separate video covering that if you're interested. From 1985 to 2001, all two-wheel drive XJs and MJs used a hollow beam axle in the front, very closely resembling the Dana 30, but without a differential carrier, for the sake of keeping the same suspension setup as the four-wheel drive models. The Dana 30 was standard for all four-wheel drive models. On the XJ and MJ, the axle is equipped with a four-link control arm system and coil springs, with the differential located on the driver's side. All years have 27 spline axle shafts. The Dana 30 went through a few renditions and changes through the years. From 1984 to 1990, along with some early 91s, it features a center axle disconnect, often abbreviated CAD or CAD, where the passenger side shaft is made of two pieces connected by a cone engaged with a shift fork by a vacuum actuator. The idea with the CAD was to reduce unnecessary centrifugal forces and drivetrain wear. By detaching the free rolling wheel from the rest of the drivetrain, the inner shaft, differential, and front drive shaft don't free spin in two wheel drive, which reduces friction and rotational mass, thereby enabling the vehicle to reach higher fuel efficiency numbers because the engine doesn't need to spend any extra power moving all this disengaged stuff. The problem with the CAD is all that added complexity. The more complex something is, the more failure points it inadvertently has. If the vacuum system or electrical connection fails at any point, the four-wheel drive won't work. This problem actually plagues my MJ as it sits right now. Because the CAD isn't engaging properly, the truck is only two-wheel drive until I get this fixed. Most would argue it's not even worth fixing the CAD system, because a two-piece shaft connected by a cone is incomparably weaker than a solid beam. The best way to bypass the CAD is to use a full-length shaft from a 91 or newer XJ. Before I continue, note that if you have an XJ from the CAD axle years and you have the select track package with full-time four-wheel drive, the axle uses the later commonplace solid shaft instead of the CAD system so it is possible to find a Dana 30 earlier than 91 without the split axle shafts. Speaking of, for 1991 through 2001, the Cherokee's Dana 30 simply got rid of the CAD system and the passenger side axle shaft is just an aforementioned solid beam. In model year 2000, for a reason still unknown to this day, Jeep replaced the highly respected Dana 30 for a low pinion version of itself. Some early 2000 models will still have a high pinion axle, but everything after that is a low pinion. The difference between a high and low pinion axle is where the drive shaft enters the differential. On this 87 MJ, it's above the center line of the axle. While on this 2001 XJ, the pinion is clearly flat and lower down. High pinion axles are better in pretty much every way. You have more ground clearance, the ring gear cooperatively meshes with the pinion gear, and there's a lot more aftermarket support for them. The low pinion axle has a steeper drive shaft angle, and the ring gear pushes outward against the pinion gear which is hard on the bearing. The only saving grace of a low pinion front axle is that they're much stronger in reverse, so if you find yourself pulling people out of the ditch pretty often, eh, it might be worth keeping. A lot of Jeepers with 2000 plus models will usually swap out the low pinion axle for a high pinion or a Dana 44 from a TJ. Both of these options are a direct bolt in. For a completely stock Cherokee or something with a modest lift that isn't abused, the low pinion axle does just fine. This one has 220,000 miles on it, it's been through at least 20 Colorado and Wisconsin winters, and the internals have never been rebuilt. So really a low pinion isn't the end of the world, but I still don't understand why manufacturers even use them. Let me know in the comments. The axle shafts are connected to the stub axles by U-joints on the Cherokee. The earlier models use a smaller and thus weaker U-joint, and the newer models use a slightly thicker part. 
You can easily upgrade the U-joints on an older Dana 30 by swapping out the axle shafts, which are all interchangeable regardless of year or ABS. When an axle U-joint fails, the shafts will bind up against each other, which renders the vehicle undrivable. If you don't do any serious off-roading, I might recommend replacing your axle shafts with ZJ shafts, because they use a constant velocity joint instead. CV joints aren't anywhere near as strong as U-joints, but if they fail, you can still drive. If you do serious off-roading and want even stronger U-joints, the shafts can be modified to fit 5x760x joints, which can handle the extra stress. I covered gear ratios in the rear axle video. In case you didn't see it, here's a table of commonly equipped stock ratios. You can also find your gear ratio by reading the tag on the differential cover. All Dana 30s request ADW90 gear oil from the factory, but differentials aren't very picky about what type of fluid you put in them. If you tow or actually have fun with your XJ, 75W140 is probably the best. All in all, the Dana 30 is a very respectable axle, with a history dating to 1966, and it's actually still used today. It can handle up to about 33 inch tires when properly equipped, and I've never had any problem with any Dana 30s in any of my Jeeps. Except the CAD thing on the MJ, I guess. With that said, thank you all for watching. And I'll see you in the next one.